high earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. This is your June 2019 Psychic Tarot Card Reading. Um, I'm doing the, usually I do the individual signs each month. I had done four of them for June, and then I just got really, really busy, and the time got away from me. And so since we're already into the month of June now, I decided just with the remainder that didn't get done, um, I'll do the in the groups the um i'm going to do the earth signs and do the air signs the water signs and the fire signs and then hopefully by next week i'll be starting on the july videos and that's where i'll go back to the individual video for each for each sign so uh so right now though this one is for taurus virgo capricorn for june 2019 and uh let's see we're starting the month with the empress card and also this it's always a general reading even when it's for the individual signs it's a general reading so some cards may resonate with some people while other cards will resonate with others and um if I'm doing a private reading, then I'm focusing in on that person's circumstances. And I am reading the meanings of the cards as well as tuning in on a psychic level. And so we're starting the month of June with the Empress card. And the Empress, this is talking about a lot of you earth signs that you have planted your seeds and you're watching them grow and develop and things are unfolding, things are coming to fruition for you and your lives. And I feel that for a lot of you, that you have been juggling a lot. You work hard. The earth signs are hard workers anyway. They just, um, and they don't have to rush and get things done right away. They are patient because they know they want quality. They will build with one brick at a time and build a solid foundation under themselves. And they are hard working people. And so, uh, I mean, if one of them is not hard working, maybe they got some other things going on in their chart. But generally, generally the earth signs are workers. And so, uh, and they're not even, how should I say this? I feel like they, they're not... I don't want to say this. They're not looking for admiration or anything necessarily when they're doing their job. They just want to get the job done. They want to do a good job, good quality work. They want to have a good quality life. They want to have a good home. They want to have a good job, a happy, good, solid family that's, um, you know, doing well. And they're willing to put in the work. And this Empress card is telling me that a lot of you are seeing the fruits of your labor in June. That you've been balancing, doing a balancing act between your work, your career, your home life, your personal activities. And you've been doing a really good job of balancing things. And you've worked hard. And maybe you have some nice little luxuries you get to enjoy in your life, in your home. You take pride in your home. You make your home the way you want it to be so you can be comfortable and enjoy yourself when you're in your home uh, and enjoy your surroundings and I feel like a number of you know you have a lot to be grateful for but at the same time you know you've worked hard for whatever you have it's not like anyone's handed something to you you, you go out you do the work and you're still working and still staying busy a lot of you so um, and you've um, you have a lot of prosperity around you it's like you've been building um, the building on a solid on solid ground and attracting good things into your lives and I always recommend if anyone's not in this kind of position learn about the laws of attraction start feeling prosperous and make it your intention to get your life the way you want it to because I'm seeing a lot of you earth signs you've been doing that and just going about the business of accomplishing your goals getting things done and just being serious about your work you know getting getting things done right the right way and it's paying off and it will continue to pay off. The next card we have is the Eight of Cups. And the cups typically relate to the water signs. And they relate to emotions and feelings and love and that sort of thing. So with the Eight of Cups, some of you may be moving on from something in June. For some of you, it might be a relationship. It might be a romantic relationship that at one time you were having a good time. You were having a lot of fun. Uh, maybe you were partying a lot with that person or just enjoying yourself a lot. And it was uh, sparkly and shiny and it was nice, but it's like you've outgrown it. 
okay? It's like maybe you started seeing other traits in that person you didn't care for, or there was, it just, you grew apart from the person, whatever it was, it's like, it's, it no longer has your interest. It's like, you know, you want better, you deserve better, you want more for yourself, and so you're looking out over the horizon, and you're moving on. For some of you, you've already moved on, and you're, you're, you're in motion. For others, you might be just in the process of feeling like, okay, this was good at one time. I really have outgrown the situation. I'm ready to move on. And maybe you haven't gone anywhere yet, but you have that realization inside of yourselves. Now, for some of you, this can relate to work. This can relate to a job that you've worked at that in the earlier times, it was a good situation for you. You enjoyed your coworkers. You were making good money. Things were going well. But now maybe you've learned new skills. Maybe you've, um, you know, you, you've grown once again. And you know, uh, maybe you feel now for the work you do, the quality of work, the skills you have now, your experience, that you're not make, being paid enough. You're not being paid what you're worth. You want more money. You want better opportunities. And I feel like for some of you that you want to move, you want to relocate to a different location because you see better opportunities and another might be another city, another state, whatever. And so you're looking out. And I don't get any fear, whether this is a relationship you're moving on from or a work or a business situation. Or for some of you, it might be a, a place, a living arrangement you've been in, a place, someplace you've been living. And it was good earlier on. And it's just, it's like, um, it's no longer serving you well. And, but I don't get fear. I get um, confidence. I get calm feelings like you're looking out over the horizon, making your plans and uh, considering which direction that you want to go in. But you know you have opportunities waiting for you. So, so this is good. This is a good card. Now, the next card we have is the Four of Cups. And Four of Cups is talking about, and again, the cups a lot of times do represent romance and feelings and relationships and that sort of thing. And with the Four of Cups, it's showing that some of you may be feeling a little bored, a little complacent, like, oh, there's really no one out there good for me. You know, maybe they, the good ones, maybe they live too far away or maybe they're taken or whatever. And so you might be a little complacent and you might end up missing out on a good opportunity because you see the hand reaching from the sky with the big goblet offering the person something and they're just looking bored, leaning against a tree and like, uh, what, you know, like, like they're not even paying attention. Like, yeah, right. You know? And so, and this can also relate to job and work opportunities, money opportunities for some of you where you've been, maybe you've been looking for a new job and you're not finding anything that's any better than what you have already, or that's not paying enough. And so you might be thinking, oh, what's the use? There's nothing out there right now. And the advice of this card is don't get complacent. Don't assume anything because life can turn on a dime. I mean, you might be going along and nothing going on and you turn the corner and all of a sudden there's a big opportunity for you. Something changes, you know. You might uh, go to the store to pick something up and meet someone you'll end up marrying or something. Or you might all of a sudden um, decide you might apply for a particular job not even expecting to get a call back and somebody contacts you or something you applied for in the past you never heard back from them and then all of a sudden somebody's contacting you i'm feeling a friend something about somebody you're going to get um a friend's going to refer you i feel like this is about a job so this might be one person I'm tuning in for. It might be a few people have some similar scenario. But I'm feeling somebody's going to have a friend, acquaintance. But it's a friend. If it's just an acquaintance, it's a friendly acquaintance. They kind of know you and they, they have a pleasant attitude towards you. And they're going to tell you about a job. It might be at their company. And I'm feeling like you'll be able to get that job. That's what I'm feeling like. That might be specific for one person. And I'm feeling like on a romantic level... One or some of you have someone who's already been, who's already aware of you. They see you somewhere. They, I don't know if this is around where you live or where you socialize with your friends, maybe around your workplace. 
And what this, this person doesn't know you real well, but what they do know of you, they like. They see you as a good quality, nice person. They might even, I feel like this person is kind of um, good at sizing people up. They might see that you're a little discouraged and you don't even seem to be paying attention to them. But this person's going to want, want to get your attention and they're sincere. And I feel like this person has a good job. They're in a good position and they're going to be making some kind of offer of, you know, like love to you. Um, not that they're going to walk up and say, I'm falling in love with you, but you know, they're going to have a good attitude and be sincere and want to get to know you on the romantic level. So, you know, I guess the, the advice though is don't be complacent, whether it's in love or work or whatever. Next card we have is the Three of Swords. And the Three of Swords is talking about some of you earth signs possibly being deceived, having people that have deceived you that you thought were your friends. Um, some of these people could, they could be friends, it could be relatives, it could be co-workers, because I'm getting different scenarios for different people. But I'm feeling like it already happened. For the most part, this already happened, whoever's affected by this Three of Swords card. And you're kind of mad about it. It's like, uh-uh, no, I've had it with this, or I'm not going to put up with this. It's some kind of feeling I'm getting of that. For those of you that are affected by this Three of Swords card in the month of June, because a lot of times it can have to do with heartache and getting your heart broken and all that. But I'm feeling, overall, those of you who have to deal with this Three of Swords energy, you're strong. You're in a strong position and you're just not putting up with it. That's what I'm getting. So this could be people you've known that you've, you're you totally aware that they've been gossiping, talking behind your back, being petty, and you are in a strong position. And it's like you're looking down at them and saying, I've had it with this. No. And you're not, you're just in a no nonsense attitude about the whole thing. And it could be, for some of you, it could be in a romantic situation where somebody been, hasn't been sincere. They've been cheating on you with somebody else and you know about it. And it's, But you're, I don't get a lot of hurt feelings or crying and carrying on. I'm getting you're in the strong position and you are in a no-nonsense mood. And you know you deserve a lot better and you're not going to waste your time with the, these people. That's what I'm getting. So whoever that applies to, it's like you're... You're in a strong, I just get a lot of strength for you in, in um, June is what I'm getting. Next card we have is the Seven of Pentacles. And the Pentacles, now this is one of your cards for the Earth signs, Pentacles, relating to Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. The Seven of Pentacles, this is um, suits you as far as I'm concerned. Working, planted your seed, you're watching your harvest grow, and you're being patient. And because you see you're accumulating something, you're making progress in your life, in your work, in your career. And so maybe you don't have everything you want right now financially, but you know you're making progress and you have the patience to keep going and keep moving along. I mean, you have a really good work ethic and um, you're very mindful about money. I feel like you're very conscious of money, how you spend your money, where it is, you know, how much you might manage to save, and you're just very, uh, in general, you have a lot of good responsible habits about money, about your finances. And again, I'm advising anyone who's feeling like, okay, I don't have any money. Nothing's going on for me. Really embrace the laws of attraction. Learn about the laws of attraction. Start feeling that prosperity. Feel prosperous. Feel like you're attracting a lot of prosperity to you and make it your intention to do so because the energy is good for you in June and going forward for making that progress in your life and laying a sound foundation. The energy is really good for you that way. The next card we have is the Queen of Cups. And the Queen of Cups, now the Cups do relate to the water signs, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. For some of you, this could be a person that you'll be around in the month of June. This might be somebody, um, for some of you, it could be somebody who would be a romantic interest for others, it could be um, even a family member. The Queen of Cups has done well. She lives comfortably, has a lot of prosperity around her. I'm getting pregnancy for somebody. Some of you might be um, embracing the 
uh, emotions and feelings of the Queen of Cups embodying the traits of the Queen of Cups in the month of June. Sometimes she can be introspective and maybe a little emotional. But I'm getting pregnancy. Somebody's pregnant or will be pregnant in June. That's what I'm feeling. I feel like that's for some, one of you earth signs, um, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Somebody's, somebody's pregnant and, uh, and just feeling peaceful about it, feeling content. I am feeling for some of you who are in the place of the Queen of Cups in June, you might have a mate or a loved one who's either living a little distance from you. They're not that convenient. So you don't get this, you're not getting to see them as often as you would like right now. Or they might be traveling for work, business, other uh, purposes like that. But they might also just live in a different city from you. And you're missing them. That's what I'm getting. But I do feel for those of you who are, uh, who are in the place of the Queen of Cups in June, again, a sense of prosperity, uh, being grateful for all that you have, being aware that you're fortunate and you do get to have certain amount of little luxuries in your life and enjoy your life that way. But being a little introspective, you know, like thinking, thinking about your life, contemplating things, contemplating uh, what you want for your future. That sort of thing. Yeah, okay. And then the next card we have is the Four of Swords. Now, the Four of Swords is talking about a lot of you hardworking earth signs, the Taurus, the Virgo, Capricorns. You work hard, and you might need to take a rest in June, <laughs> catch up on your sleep, maybe take a long weekend, because you do work so hard, and you need to stop sometime and just relax and have some recreation and rest before you get back out there to fight the battles again. And uh, so that's all this is about really is resting after um, expending a lot of energy, maybe having a certain amount of stress going on in your life between work, maybe personal things going on. If you're dealing with that three of swords energy, um, that's draining, you know, it can be very stressful and draining dealing with people like that. Um, but in general, those of you who have just been working long hours, maybe some of you work two jobs or work and go to school or you go to work all day, then you've got family responsibilities when you get home at night. Uh, the Four of Swords is saying you need to catch up on your rest. Okay, next card we have is the Two of Swords. And the Two of Swords, this is for some of you, you might be in a dilemma in June where you can't make up your mind, possibly between two people in your life. For some of you, you might be involved with two people at the same time. And you don't know which one to choose. You see good traits like one of them. I feel like for some of you who have this situation going on, one of the people you've been with that one longer, you're more familiar with them, and you, you have some pretty good compatibility there. The other one might be a, they might be a little newer in your life, but also I get a sense of them not being, not having as much follow through, almost like they're back and forth or you get mixed messages from the other one. But the other one's being pretty assertive about wanting your attention, but they're unreliable. It's like they're back and forth. Uh, you know, you get mixed messages from them, but at the same time, they're being kind of aggressive about wanting you to give them your attention. Like they, if they, they, they seem to know, I think this person might know about the other person that you're, you're seeing and, um, they're jealous. I'm getting from this second person who's kind of, you know, not as steady, that they've got a lot of insecurities. Now, this might be one person I'm tuning in for, but it might be a few of you or something similar. The one that's acting a little more, you know, they're unreliable, but at the same time being a little more aggressive and all that, maybe even have a little anger issue or something, but I'm getting jealousy. I get a lot of insecurities with that person, and they're acting that way. It's coming from their own insecurities. 
But I feel like it's obvious the person that, to me, what I'm getting tuning in for, the person that you've known and who's been real steady and consistent seems to be the best choice. <laughs> um, and then for some of you, this could be a work situation also where you're trying to decide between two jobs. You might already have one job that's been going well for you, and there's another job opportunity where they're trying to be kind of assertive to get you to go work for them. But I'm getting a similar feeling with that, that what you have already is the stronger situation and the, and the more steady, reliable, consistent situation for you, whether it's a relationship or a job. But the advice of this card is to take off the blindfold. Don't get so confused that you're, you do nothing, you know, and that's what the Two of Swords is doing. They don't know what to do, so they've got the blindfold on, and they're temporarily doing nothing. So you have to take the blindfold off, step back from the situation, be objective, plus listen to your intuition, and make a good decision for you. Don't be influenced by what these people are saying to you, because they might each be doing their own little sales job trying to hold on to you in some way or another. So you make a good decision about what's right for you when you're calm and kind of detached from the situation and do pay attention to your own intuition. Usually if you get a smooth, nice feeling about one thing and you get kind of a little uncomfortable feeling under your skin about the other, that'll give you a clue right there. If you get that little uncomfortable feeling, that's a red flag. And here we have the Nine of Cups. This is a wonderful card. And the Nine of Cups is also known as the Wish card. So some of you who've made a big wish for yourselves, you might find your wish coming true by the end of June. And if you haven't made a wish yet, make one now. Make it meaningful, though. Make it count. The Nine of Cups is talking about a number of you Earth signs, Taurus, Virgos, Capricorns. You're going to be celebrating by the end of June, celebrating all your good, your prosperity, your abundance, and just enjoying your life, which we're supposed to enjoy our lives too, in addition to working hard. <laughs> and a lot of you are going to be doing that, it looks like, by the end of June and just feeling good. You might be celebrating with your friends or family or just celebrating on your own just feeling good and being joyous and being grateful for all the good that you've you've attracted into your lives because I feel like those of you who are in this position in June you've been attracting all this prosperity to yourselves you've had the right kind of attitude of creating prosperity and happiness and a sense of security and confidence for yourselves and once again I always advise people get the feeling of it, the sense of it, even if you don't see it in your world yet. When you feel prosperous and feel like you've got a lot to be grateful for every day, the universe delivers those conditions to you. So you'll actually see it after you feel it. The last card we have is the Ten of Cups. And the Ten of Cups, this is a very nice card, also talking about family happiness, happiness in your home and prosperity. And for a lot of you, you might be in a relationship with the right person for you. You might be married or engaged or just involved with the person who's right for you. And the two of you are enjoying yourselves and enjoying your home and environment. But for a lot of you, you might not have that perfect person in your life, but you're still celebrating your life. You're enjoying your home. You've made your home where you want it to be. So when you're there, you're enjoying your surroundings and feeling grateful for all the good and all the prosperity that you have, whatever little luxuries you get to enjoy, because you put those things in place. You've attracted this to yourselves. And so you're pleased with yourself and your life. This is the best way to be. If you're not already attached to someone and you're single and you're on your own, the best thing you can do for yourself and your life is to just develop all of your own interest. Be happy and grateful for all the good you have every day. Make your home the way you want it so you'll be happy and pleased with your surroundings. Enjoy your own company or enjoy the company of your friends, relatives, whatever. But, you know, feel like you can be happy and content and enjoy your own company in your home when you're there. And, and enjoy and feel good about your work that you're doing, the money you're making, everything you have. And uh, so you can live happily 
on your own. And then when that right person comes along, you will attract, I guess what I'm trying to say, if you already have it together like that, where you're happy on your own or about as happy as, as could be expected, you're going to attract someone else who has it together. Whereas if you're feeling um, needy or unhappy or al all alone and miserable, you might end up attracting another person who's kind of miserable or maybe they're going to make you more miserable. You know, to attract the best possible connection for yourself, you need to already be happy and have it together for yourself and your life and then meet someone. That way you can attract someone who will complement your life. You know, maybe they come into your life and they have it together. They have a nice home of their own and they're happy in their own lives. And then the two of you can enjoy each other's company. So this is good whether you have someone, it looks like you'll be enjoying that your life or if you don't a lot of you're going to be enjoying yourselves by the end of June and so anyway this deck I've been using this is the Gilded Tarot by Shiro Marchetti and what I want to do now is pick one card from the um, Magical Mermaids and Dolphins deck by um, Doreen Virtue and if you like my videos, be sure and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. And uh, if you have subscribed already, I thank you for your subscriptions. And when you do subscribe, be sure and press the little the, the notification bell. So you'll get notifications when I upload new videos also. And uh, be sure you can be checking uh, for your rising and moon signs. There are four also of the individual months, like I said, four of those have been done for the individual signs. And then I will be doing, uh, since I did earth signs now, I'll, I'll go on to one of the other groups tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be the air signs or water signs or what, but I'll do another one tomorrow. So you can be checking with those too. If your earth, if your moon or rising falls into one of those. Okay. And feel free to leave your comments. I welcome your comments. And if anyone would like a private reading, my rates and contact info are listed below. Okay, so Magical Mermaids and Dolphins, what is your message for the Earth signs of Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn for June 2019? What's your message for Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn for June 2019? For June 2019... Oh, I like this. Okay, this is a nice card. This says protection. You, your loved ones, and your possessions are safe and protected by heaven. That's a nice message. That's always comforting to get that one. Protection. You, your loved ones, and your possessions are safe and protected by heaven. Okay, now next, I want to pick one from Nature's Whispers by Angela Hartfield with artwork by Josephine Wall. Okay, so what's the message for the Earth signs for June 2019 for Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn? What's the message? Okay, well... Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. What's the message for June 2019? Okay, I'll give them one more shuffle and then fan these out. Okay. Okay, let's see. All right, now this one, this is beautiful. Look at these images. I love these cards. This says perfect setting. Now this is number nine, so I will read. I'll read this one in the in the little booklet and see what it says. She's painting the sunrise. There's just so many beautiful details in these cards. I love them. Okay, let me look this one up. Number nine. Okay, perfect setting. Here it is. Okay, perfect setting. If you have a goal or vision, be sure to provide the right surroundings for that dream to flourish. Positive self-talk, affirmations, being kind to yourself, celebrating your talents and successes. All of these create fertile soil for your dreams to take root and grow. Sometimes when you push too hard, it can hinder 
the harmonious unfolding of your journey. Trust the process, relax, and allow nature to take its course. Belief and positive support is needed to accomplish your goal. Keep in mind, nature makes growing and blossoming look effortless, but the secret is in all the details, position, sun, soil, air, water, and nourishment. Make sure you are taking the steps necessary to attain your perfect environment. That's a really good message, and I, I think it ties in, too, with some of these other cards that we had here, the Empress, the Seven of Pentacles, these uh, nice cups cards here with the Nine of Cups, Ten of Cups. Really good message. Okay, let's see. And last but not least, I'm going to pick one card from, if I can get my hands on them, one card from the Archangels cards, Oracle cards by um, Doreen Virtue. Okay, Archangels, what is your message for the Earth signs of Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn for June 2019? What's your message for the Earth signs? Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn for June 2019. What's your message for the Earth signs for June 2019? I'll give it one more shuffle and fan these out. What is your message for the Earth signs of Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn for June 2019? Okay, this one. This says creative writing. Archangel Gabriel, make time to write down your thoughts in a journal or pen an article or book. That's nice advice. Creative writing. Archangel Gabriel, make time to write down your thoughts in a journal or pen an article or book. What comes to my mind about this creative writing card, uh, because I kept saying, uh, pay, you know, learn about the law of attraction and everything. When you start writing down your goals and dreams and uh, maybe set some time frames that you would like to achieve things by, um, that can really help to make your dreams come true and help you to materialize things. So um, in addition to any other kind of creative writing that you might want to do, you might want to get a notebook and start making, setting goals for yourself, whether it's a personal goal or a business or a money goal or a home situation, whatever it is, write, start writing notes about your ideal way of life. And, um, and then what you can do from there is start making plans, uh, maybe break it down into what kind of steps you might need to take to attain that um, situation that you would like for yourself. And the more you do that, and then if you're looking at it every day and maybe making some more notes, breaking things down a little further, and then start taking action on it, you can start to achieve your goals. And by doing that, you're making it into something real instead of just a dream in your head. And then also you're helping yourself to help the universe to bring all the pieces of the puzzle together to make those dreams a reality for you. Okay, good. So, uh, well, I hope you like your reading. Like I said, for the July readings, I will go back to doing the individual signs, but um, hopefully a lot of the messages are resonating with those earth signs who are watching the video and also keep watching the, um, the other ones. Uh, like I said, four are done. So if one of somebody has their earth, their rising or moon signs of the individual ones, you can check those. And I'll be having the other groups of them coming up too with fire signs, water signs, air signs. Those will be coming up too. So you can be checking with those. And, um, and then I have a new pick a card video also. So um, you can check that out as well. So you might want to check on that one after you uh, uh, watch this video here. Watch my new pick a card video and you can ask a question and focus on a card and see what, um, what group of cards you get. Okay, well great. Well thank you Earth Signs for watching my video. Feel free to leave your comments. I welcome your comments. And if anyone would like a private reading, my rates and contact info are listed below. So enjoy the rest of your June and be on the lookout for the new July videos to start coming out probably next week. Uh, thank you for watching my video.